All right, hello. Uh, so in a previous screencast, we um, formulated our profit maximizing uh, linear programming problem. For example, one, uh, so our first uh, production planning example from section 2.2.1 in the text. Uh, so as, as I mentioned, um, I'm a Linux user, so I'll solve a lot of these problems using VBraOffice Calc. Um, but I was able to get access to Excel on a virtual server uh, here on campus. So I want to go through a solution um, using um, Microsoft Excel. Okay, So the first thing I'm going to point out is just getting, what I've learned is getting Excel set up, or um, solver set up on Excel. And so, um, so here, here's Excel open. So if I click on data, data is where solver is going to be under. Um, currently, it, it's not there, right? So under what if analysis there is, is goal seek. Um, but solver isn't populated. So how to get solver, um, so let me go back. So I'm going to click on file, and then options. And under options, there's add-ins. Okay. And then, so there's no active uh, add-ins. So the add-in I need is this solver add-in. Okay. So I'm going to click OK. Actually, did that do it? Hold on. Options, add-ins, and I want the solver add-in. So do I need to click go? Okay, you need to click go, not okay. Um, so go, I want to add the solver add-in. Let's see if that does it for us. That's uh, doing something down here. Bam. Okay. So now under data, I now have solver available. Um, perfect. Okay. So let's go back to our problem statement and, and take a look at it. And now let's get things set up in Excel now that I have solver working. All right. So when I formulate this in Excel, um, just like I did in LibreOffice Libre, yeah, Libre Calc, um, I will try and write it in more of a generalized form. And what I mean by that is here's our nice compact uh, linear programming problem uh, as we formulated it in the uh, last screencast. But I want to write it in a little bit more of a generalized form. right? So for example, my uh, profit is sum over units of product uh, times profit per unit. Um, so I could just you know hard code an expression like this, but I'm going to want to try and generalize it where I put say the profits of each product um, in their own cells, so that if I want to do some what if um, you know scenarios, so if I want to do a sensitivity analysis, it's easy enough to change those uh, values um, and then see what the effect is. Okay, and having just set this up, hopefully it's a little uh, easier for us to to do exactly that. All right, so. What I'm going to do over here is let's start by, um, let's see, so this isn't a, a class uh, on how pretty it is. So let's say we have product one, two, and three. Okay. And so let's create a column here for the profit for product. And then let's just do, say, number of units. So in terms of the profit per product, that's what I'm looking at here. That's the 5, uh, 350, and 450. Okay. Number of units. Okay. That's actually x1, x2, and x3, what we're trying to solve for. But when I set this up in Excel, I need to start by giving uh, initial guesses. Okay. So let's just say, um, I don't know. One, ah, one, two, and three. So I'll have an initial guess of one unit of, of product one, uh, two units of component two, and uh, three units of component three. And so with that, I can calculate my objective, which is my total profit. Okay. Now, when I calculate my total profit, so in this objective cell, Okay, remember, I'm going to start with an equal sign because I need to enter a formula. And it's going to take the form of profit per product 
times number of units of that product. Okay, plus profit times number of units plus profit per unit times number of units of that product. Okay, so this would give me the um, you know total profit. You know, if you want, you could even change the cell type to display this as, as a dollar amount. Um, but you know, just remember it's uh, dollars. Now we need to think about our constraints. So remember our constraints um, have to deal with um, the you know number of uh, operable hours uh, on each machine. And so let me just type up um, this here. So let's recreate this table. So row one is, is machine one, row two is machine two. And then we're gonna have, was this minutes, um, minutes per unit. Okay, so that'd be for P1, P2, and P3. Okay, all of them are um, minutes per unit. Okay, so I guess for completeness, I could copy that. Bam. Okay. So three, five, four. Six, one, three. Okay. And then let's list um, total capacity. And that's in hours. or, you know, planning period, so eight uh, hours and nine. Okay, and then let's just convert actually to minutes here. Since it's easy enough. So since this is a minutes per uh, unit, and here I have hours, we want to make sure everything's in consistent units. So I'm just going to do equals uh, hours times my conversion factor would be 60 minutes uh, per hour. Great. Okay. Now, in terms of constraints, you know, we could write this in a number of ways. Okay. So here, right, it's the same as, as I have down here, right? This is just um, production time uh, in minutes. So production time in minutes per unit times the number of units of each uh, product. So that's machine one and, and that's machine two. And then that's going to be less than or equal to the total capacity. So I could leave it like this because in solver I could reference you know to my cells with the total time required to make or total production time requirement for each machine uh, and then the max. Or if I wanted to, I could say subtract 480 and then 540 you know from both sides in these two expressions so that um, I make a comparison to zero. Sometimes I have a tendency to do that because zero is a number that's easy for me to remember. Um, but, uh, you know, trying to remember more specifics can sometimes cause this old person, this old uh, instructor you have to uh, have issues. Okay. Um, either is, is completely fine. Okay. So let me do this. Okay. So let's do, um, I'll call it constraint one, constraint two. Okay, so it's going to be equal to the number of units. So, so this be constraint. Let me call it M1 for machine one, and then M2. Okay, so it'll be uh, say the number of units of each product. So again, starting with an equal sign because uh, it's a formula equals to um, number of units of product one times the uh, time per unit product one plus same thing for product two plus same thing for product three okay and then since you know I remember zero I'm going to subtract that total capacity 480 okay so that rather than having this less than or equal to 480, by subtracting 480, it's going to be less than or equal to zero, um, which is something I can remember. Okay, I'll do the same thing for uh, machine two. Number of 
And so remember when you know I use LibreOffice for a lot of my calculations, it's not that um, I'm trying to argue that LibreOffice is superior to Excel. It's just what I have access to um, as a Linux user. Okay, so there's my constraint. Hey, I forgot my space here, so I'm trying to make it look pretty. Bam. Okay, so now um, our now we um, we'll call our solver. Um, and so the other constraints we have are non-negativity constraints. And so, you know, I could just refer to those um, cells and make sure they're greater than or equal to zero. Um, or solver should have a built-in um, checkbox if you wanted to. So I click on solver now, which is under data. Okay, so my objective function is um, the cell. Okay, my uh, total profit. So I want to maximize that. Um, so I want that to be a maximum. Um, by changing variable cells. So my variables are going to be the number of products of component 1, 2, and 3, or number of units of product 1, 2, and 3. Remember, you have to start with the initial guess. So these can't be empty. Um, you have to start with the initial guess. Then subject to the constraints. Okay, so now here in Excel, um, we add them. So we're going to have the constraint, um, our time on machine 1 has to be less than or equal to 0. Okay. But again, you know, I, I could just as well, you know, refer to, you know, you know, say 480 if I hadn't subtracted 480 to make sure it was less than or equal to 480. So let me add that. Okay. And then I'm going to make sure this is also less than or equal to zero. Okay. I'm going to click OK because I want to see here. So in terms of uh, solving methods, okay, um, they have a... They have some fancy ones in here. They have uh, nonlinear optimizer. Uh, evolutionary optimizer is, is pretty sweet. Okay, even um, tells you so. Select the GRG nonlinear engine for solver problems that are smooth nonlinear. Uh, select the LP simplex engine for linear solver problems, and select the evolutionary engine for solver problems that are non-smooth. Right. So we can just do uh, simplex. Okay, and if I look under um, options, um, we don't need to mess with with how things are actually um, done. But um, I was looking to see if they had an. Um, so you can do integer constraints. I was looking to see if they had um, a checkbox to make sure or to specify that things were non-negative. Okay, so we're going to have to add that um, number of products of component one. It's going to be greater than or equal to zero. number of products, product 2 is greater than or equal to 0. So I need to manually add my uh, non-negativity constraints. And then let's do the third one. Number of products, number of um, units of product 3 are also greater than or equal to 0. Um, in LibreOffice Calc, they have a checkbox uh, for the non-negativity constraint, um, but it doesn't look like that's here in Excel, but that's okay. Okay, And then it's pretty intuitive how you could go through and, and edit. Uh, so if I solve, uh, solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. Um, okay, let's save it. And so we would find 48 units of product 1, 0 for 2, 84 for 3, the profit of $618. Um, and our constraints are exactly satisfied. So if I go back to the problem, so let's see. Uh, 20, 0, and 120 units. Okay, so the answer is not exactly right. So let me see if I have a typo and if I can't fix that. So the profits are 5, 350, and 450. 5, 350, and 450. Okay, that's good. Let's look at um, production call or time 354. Okay, that's good. Then 613, that all looks good. Total capacity, 8 and 9 hours. Uh, 8 and 9. Convert that to minutes. Okay, that looks fine. Constraint 1. Number of units. That's B9. C3 times C9. And C4 times D9, uh, that should be fine. 
minus F9, C2 times B10, yeah, B10, C10, and D10, minus F10. So I'm not seeing anything wrong here. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I have everything right. So I don't see anything wrong with uh, our solution. Those are all positive. Oh yeah, there's there's a checkbox. Make unconstrained variables non-negative. But yeah, this is the solution I obtained. Uh, 48 units of of um, product one, uh, zero units of um, product two, three, uh, 84 units of product three, and zero of product two. So that's consistent um, with what they have. Uh, but my numerical value uh, differs. Let's leave it um, as it is for now. I, I don't notice um, any mistakes. And then what I'll do is when we solve in LibreOffice Calc and then ultimately MATLAB, uh, we can see if those are consistent um, as well. Okay, so all right, just solved one in Excel.